In my opinion, no other synthesis method best exemplifies the heading for this week, striving for and departing from realism. And we're going to be talking about granular synthesis. And there are a few granular synthesizers out there, but it can be very difficult and very confusing to break those down into just your basic granular components. And that's what I want to do for you here, because this is all about learning the method not necessarily, you know, how wacky of a sound can you get. And obviously, by the end of this, we're going to see how wacky of a sound we can get with just a handful of controls and parameters. And I also hope that you start to now see some of the logic for why I've arranged the course the way I have. We start with something very real in a sample. It's an expected result. If it says violin, we click play. It is a violin. Um, I guess even a better example is, you know, you, you see... Uh, or you hear a song on the radio and you download that song. It's like a Taylor Swift song. You purchase that song. You click play on that audio file. It is what you expect it to be, right? It's not something that's out of nowhere. And here, at the other end of the extreme, we can start with a sample and have an expected result, but we can then use it to create something totally different. So it's like realism from the start to abstraction at the end. And that's what granular is all about. So Absinthe could very easily be used to, you know, do an entire course on synthesis for, and we could actually do that. Uh, the reason I'm not doing that is because I want you to see how it's very easy to load up any synthesizer, break it down into its component parts, and then know what category it fits in. So in this case, we actually have a heading that says granular, and so clearly this is going to be granular. And I need a sample to bring in. So I'm going to use one of the samples that comes with Absinthe. I'm going to go in here to the vocal woman ah because it's something we're all kind of familiar with. Play it one more time just to get in your head. We'll bring it in and let's listen to it right off the bat. So similar, right? Striving for realism. Clearly something is different about this. It almost sounds like there's a flanger or a chorus on it. But that's actually not what's going on. I mean, the, the same general idea is actually true, but we're going to talk about what those settings are. Uh, notice how if I hold down the key, I'm still holding it and it's cut off. All right, there's no looping going on, at least not with this granular synthesizer or not with the settings we have. In fact, with the uh, settings that we will get to, there is no loop option. So when it gets to the end of the sample, it just stops. And so there's no reason for me to adjust this start time unless I'm trying to create more of just like a pluck sound or, or like something along those lines like... <laughs> But that's not what I want to do. I want to create something a little bit more uh, sustaining, a little more experimental. And so I'll put the start down to zero. I'm not going to adjust the transposition. That just stands for pitch. And if we go into the mod section, here is where we actually see the granular options. And so it's actually giving it that unique sort of a sound that makes it sound like a chorus or a flanger is this density control. Right now, the density is at 8, and that's controlling the number of grains. Or we could think about it in a much easier way. It's controlling the number of iterations being played back on top of each other. So when you have something like a unison detune, you know, you're stacking oscillators, you're putting oscillators on top of each other. That's what's happening here with this density of 8. So if I bring that down... We'll hear how the sound starts breaking up on itself a little bit more. Until we get all the way to one. And so now we just have one iteration that's playing. And the reason why it's stuttering like that is because we're taking a size from that sample. All right, the higher we go, the longer it's going to last, but it's never going to get high enough where we can just play back the whole thing. So that's the highest we're able to go to here. And so if we bring the density back up, you can hear now it only takes us two iterations to get something that in some cases is actually filling out. But sometimes it's not, right? Like it's not always sounding very sustaining, but if I bring this up, it will. 
And part of the issue, when I bring this down to say two, is that we have this random time key here. And so that's choosing what random time in that sample are these two different grains going to play back. And I can bring this down, which means no matter how many times I hit the key, it's always going to sound the same. But if I bring this up and go up really high with it, Each and every time, it should be a little bit different. Let's just bring up the density a little bit more. And now we're actually at something that's quite a bit similar to the uh, original sample that we had. And so this really isn't granular because the size of those chunks are so big that they're distinct. And you can tell that it's still a choir sound very easily, right? But if I bring this down, and let's go back, let's put the density down to one, let's put the random to zero, and let's start bringing this down. Now we've created something that's a little bit more similar to like the micro sampling that we did before. This grain size is now very, very tiny, but remember, it's still only going to play back for like that three seconds or whatever before cutting off and finishing through to the sample. We can adjust that. And here is where this takes on, you know, the classic granular for texture effect, the time percentage. Right? If we speed this time percentage up, it's going to cut off much quicker. As well as impact the pitch. So it's impacting both of those things. So there's like a stretching algorithm going on here too, like we saw with the sampling. Right? We had that effect. But now it kind of changes. You don't always know what exactly to expect, but more likely you're going to be actually taking this down to below 100%. Okay. And that is what's going to create more of that sustaining texture. Cause it's going to be playing back much slower. And so you maybe could still tell that this is a choir, but once we start adjusting the density, the size, and then we get into these random controls, that is where things get really fun. So let's take the density up. Let's put it at like five for now. And let's adjust the size to taste. Now I'm going to start hitting other notes just because I want to see what it's going to sound like at different places on the keyboard. We can throw in that random time. So now with how aggressive we're being to this sample coming in, it's going to make each of those grains, each of these different uh, iterations, very different depending on where it hits in the time of that sample, right? It should sound very different, especially when we go aggressive with the timing. And now we can go in random frequency. All right, each of these grains is now going to be pitched independently. We can set the degree of randomness.
And the last option is just how much random amplitude do we want? So do we want all of the grains to be the same loudness or do we want them to be different? And we can set the extremity of that here. And so let's just have a little bit of fun messing with these. In our game more like a water effect. And so these sort of sounds, these sort of just sporadic little glitchy all over the place textures is what you normally associate with granular. And then when you go in and you start to add additional effects, like there's some really interesting effects that pair well with the granular in here, as well as things like wave shapers. Um, and other mod uh, type effects that are in here, things like frequency shifters, uh, super comb, cloud, oftentimes associated with granular. So I've gone on and I've added a few effects, two of which are actually granular type effects. Um, this first one here, we have a grain cloud, and then we have in the actual effects, the thing called the aetherizer. And if I was to just go in with the sound that I've created, I've also added a delay and a reverb. I could very easily create some uh, diverse and interesting textures here. And let's just mess around with it a little bit. And I could set some of these to be macros. So something like that could really be useful for, I don't know. Yeah, you know what? I don't know what it could be useful for, but it sounds very cool. And I think that's why I really enjoy doing things like granular synthesis. And it's why I wanted to show these techniques to you guys early on. It's because these are the synthesis methods where there are no rules and you don't really even need to know that much in order to make some really cool and unique sounds because who would have thought that this had started as a basic female ah sound. You can see how far it's come and it's only taken a few minutes for us to get there.